about cardiovascular disease and how to prevent it. I know I do on this Saturday morning. So welcome to Hatching for Health, where we are going to talk about this with a doctor from the practice of Vital Vein and Heart. We have Dr. Khaled here. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Jessica, for having me. Also known as uh, KK, huh? That's right, that's In your right. community, yeah. Go ahead and have a seat. We've got some uh, fresh coffee for us, too. Yes. <laughs> So you were, um, you're based out of Houston. Based out of Houston, yes. And were you also, like, were you born and raised here? I was born in California, actually. Okay. But I've been in Houston since I was four years old. So, long time. A long time, yeah. So this is where it's everything home. is, you know, been built up. And you're a part of a, like, your family has physicians within it, right? Yeah, so my uncle is actually our president. And uh, he founded the practice. And he's grown it tremendously to where now there's about 28 uh, different subspecialties, mainly cardiologists, but vascular surgeons, podiatrists. We have an endocrinologist. Oh, you do. So we're so expanding multi-specialty. Multi yeah. Found it as a cardiology group, but now we're expanding. Okay. Uh, and and the name as well. So is that encompass a total multi-specialty group, the, the term vital? We have like little subsets. So we have vital foot and ankle to, to, for our podiatry group. And so we're, we're, you know, we started off as cardiology, but now we're sort of expanding a little bit. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And you are predominantly out of one one of the locations, or do you actually go to a few? I go to a few. I, I have an office in the medical center, but then I spend a lot of time in our humble office off of 59 and 1960, which is our sort of main corporate yeah, office. Yeah, that's a yeah. great location. Yeah, yeah. That fits, that 1960 just, you know, stretches yeah. across from spring to woodlands to Houston. Houston's so big now. It is. Know? And so it's, it's part of Houston, but, you know, kind of outside. Yeah. So, so tell me, so you're interventional cardiology. Mm -hmm. So I know there's cardiologists, there's yeah. interventional cardiologists, but you also do another layer of cardiology. You had some additional training. Yeah, so I'm an interventional cardiologist, which is in and of itself an extra year after your training of general cardiology fellowship. But during that year, we did a lot of structural work. And structural cardiology involves things such as valve replacements, closures of different uh, congenital heart defects like holes in the heart, um, and there's a other, you know, now it's expanded to involve a clipping of certain valves. And so really? the field of structural cardiology is amazing because it just continues to expand. Mm -hmm. As more technology comes, it's crazy what we've been able to do now. So that term structural mm -hmm. is kind of that other layer of, yeah. of, of what you would say, yeah. structural cardiologist. It implies doing procedures outside the bread and butter of interventional cardiology. And the bread and butter of interventional is really uh, dealing with percutaneous coronary interventions, like people that have suffered from heart attacks, putting in stents, things mm -hmm. of that nature. So when you talk about that, I, I immediately think about how do we present it, right? So, yeah. I mean, that's got to be huge in like your everyday it's, conversations with patients. It's huge. It's huge. And it, what's funny is too, Jessica, when I started uh, after my training, I spent a lot of time in the hospital. And so during that aspect of my life, I was literally dealing with people after they've suffered their event, right? Mm -hmm. So someone comes in, they're having chest pain, they've had a heart attack, and then we do the procedures and, you know, get them better. Yeah. Now my practice has shifted a little bit. I've spent a lot more time in the office setting in the clinic, and so now my goal is really a lot more for prevention, right? And so mm -hmm. how do we do that? Well, proper screening is key. If someone's having symptoms, a stress test is a great way to check and see if there's a potential major blockage in there. Okay. And if someone has major risk factors, there's another test like a CT coronary angiogram mm -hmm. where we can literally see within the artery without actually doing any sort of procedure. And then I'm able to risk stratify and mm. let people know there's an, a mild plaque inside of your heart. There's an intermediate plaque inside of your heart. Mm -hmm. And so when you tell them that, it changes their mindset completely. You're actually able to get the patients to do a lot more in terms of lifestyle modifications because now we have definitive, objective evidence that there's mm. a potential future problem. I see. So you're basically able to, you know, kind of do all of that and look at what could become a diagnosis, yeah. you yeah. know, later if they don't treat it. Absolutely. Um, or not treat it necessarily, but just more so change some of their habits. Yeah. And I, like, and would that potentially prevent them from having to ever even have surgery or a procedure. Absolutely. I want to show you this model that I brought, if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, this one? Here. Yeah, or no, the, this okay. one here. So this is an example of a normal, happy, healthy artery. It's clean. Mm -hmm. So when you're younger, almost everyone has an artery like this. Okay. As we get older and our risk factors start to play a role, 
and mm -hmm. I'll get into the risk factors here in a second, you start to develop these plaques, these fatty atherosclerotic plaques. This is an example of a mild plaque here. This plaque really doesn't cause a problem in and of itself, mm -hmm. but the issue with it is that it can grow. Okay. It can grow, and the more it grows, the more likely it is to erupt or rupture. Oh. And plaque rupture is how you end up with a heart attack. The analogy I give people is that these plaques are volcanoes, okay. and I am a volcano finder. Mm. And that's kind of why preventative cardiology is such an important role in my everyday life right now. Mm -hmm. Find the volcanoes, educate the patients on where they are, how big they are, and then we want to prevent these events from happening, which is essentially where when the plaque ruptures, yeah. you release all this fatty sort of uh, uh, material into the bloodstream. And then your bloodstream sees that, mm -hmm. recognizes it as a foreign object, and then clots it off. And that's how you get wow. a heart attack. Right. Man, so th this is like a normal, mm -hmm. and this is like somebody's building up yeah. to become this, what would be like basically like a heart attack? This, this is an example of a acute thrombotic heart attack, which is when we have to activate the cath lab emergency and go in and sort of rescue this artery by putting in wires, sucking mm -hmm. out the clot, and putting in stents, yeah. And it all started somewhere, right? Well, is this basically tied to food and exercise? I mean, Yeah, this... so when it comes to the risk factors, you have modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable. Mm -hmm. The non-modifiable ones are your age and your genetics. You can't change them, okay. right? Mm -hmm. But the modifiable ones are what you alluded to, what you put in your body, how much exercise you do, what's your blood pressure, What's your sugar? What's your, do you have diabetes, prediabetes? Mm -hmm. What's your cholesterol level? Smoking? Things like that. Okay. Yeah. Which, I mean, they should be important to anybody, but yeah. cardiovascular, more importantly. Um, and is there, I mean, certain things, like when you say the term plaque, is that, is that specific to like smoking or is that, can that also be food related yeah. or lack of exercise? Yeah. No, all, all of these risk factors play a role. The irony is, is that as much as we know, in mm -hmm. 2022 in terms of the medical knowledge that we have. Mm -hmm. Atherosclerosis, even though we have a really good sense of what's going on, we're not able to fully, fully, fully predict why this happens more to other people than not. Right? And we don't have a magical pill mm -hmm. to clear this plaque. There is a thing called plaque regression. I have seen it, but mm -hmm. it is exceedingly rare. Okay. And the only way to really get that to happen is with the very, very strict modification and controlling the risk factors I talked about. Um, but the, the thing with, with cardiology as a whole and atherosclerotic heart disease, it's the number one leading cause of death yeah. worldwide. Cardiovascular, I, I remember that from like, even you know in school growing up, it was like yeah. cardiovascular, we like, that yeah. was one of the main you know, killers like based on not yeah. being, you know, in the in the health related yeah. to that, like. Yeah, and you could even throw stroke in there too because it's the same process. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's the same process. It's you know, atherosclerosis is sort of that beginning stage. It's when you know it starts somewhere, mm -hmm. and so catching it early is of paramount importance. And I know with like certain screenings, you know, we we as individuals are told you'll do colonoscopy at this age, yeah. you'll do a breast examination at this age. What is the, what is the age that we uh, should come see I, you? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad that, that, I brought that, up. that you even brought that up. <laughs> yeah, because, it's like... <laughs> because I am such a big proponent of the powers that be yeah. making a declaration saying above the age of blank, let's mm -hmm. say 50, Yeah. everyone should get a screening coronary CT angiogram because it's one of those things, it's not a very expensive test. It's, I mean, the harm from the test is not great. I mean, there's a little radiation exposure, mm -hmm. but considering how much radiation an interventional cardiologist exposes themselves to on the daily, it's absolutely nothing. And it's one of those things where we can catch so much of this atherosclerosis early on so that we can prevent events from happening. And it, it's... And that test is called... Well, the, 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 the easy, well, a stress test, is, you have different the screening to, tests, right? Mm -hmm. So a stress test is usually reserved for people that have symptoms. Yeah. Chest pain, shortness of breath. Okay. Um, and the, the test that I'm talking about is a coronary CT angiogram. It's one of my favorite okay. tests because it's, mm -hmm. it's so simple. Coronary a, CT angiogram. Yeah. So it includes doing a CT scan, but you have to prep them. You have to put, have an IV 
okay. and give a little bit of contrast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great test. And is that done? It, it's an outpatient thing. You, oh, yeah. you go in, you're yeah. not under anesthesia or is no, there? No, okay. no, There's no pain, just an mm -hmm. IV. It takes five minutes. And um, the other beautiful thing about our field in cardiology, a lot of us um, were able to comprehensively take care of patients mm -hmm. uh, in an outpatient setting. Right. That's and great. so, yeah, kind of avoid the hospital as much as possible mm -hmm. because, you know, that's that's the goal. Yeah. Right. We don't want people going in and out of the hospital, whether mm -hmm. it be for testing or whether it be for procedures. Of course, because um, you've got multiple locations. So do they all encompass like kind of a, you know, a suite call it for certain cardiovascular procedures? Yeah. Our main office, the one uh, off of uh, 1960 and 59, uh, it has everything that you could want from an outpatient cardiology center. We have our own ambulatory surgical center. Oh, great. Um, we're able to do a lot of procedures there. Is the um, name of it like vital yeah. or is it? Okay. It's it's under the vital heart and vein. Well, that's uh, where all building. the vitals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that yeah. I, you know, we yeah. related with a, a, yeah. a name. Yeah. yeah. But some of our other offices, just because of space reasons, and it's, it's, it's hard to have every single test that you alluded to under uh, one roof, but yeah, um, I, I bet we we try and make it as as simple as we can for our patients. Yeah. Of course. So you know, as a as a group, as an individual, like, do you, as far as giving back, I mean, are, do y'all support, you know, any organizations? Yeah. As it relates, more importantly, I'd like to know about one type of children. Yeah. No, absolutely. We're, we're I'm personally very involved with a charity called the uh, Arts of Healing, and they actually have a lot of support for physicians. And um, their charity uh, connections with the Sunshine Kids. Okay. And so it's been very. I think good. I saw. Wasn't yeah. there an event at the end of the year, like yeah. the Christmas? Yeah. Christmas every year there's had? a there's a there's an event. And, okay. Uh, it's a very very good charity, very good organization. That's wonderful. Yeah. And are, is their main goal to you know for basically prevention or for helping children with cardiovascular conditions? I don't think in particular it's with that, but it's definitely geared towards helping the children. For with sure. medical yeah. needs and. Mm -hmm and stuff of that nature. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I am uh, definitely going to have you, you know, come back on the show and, and be an expert opinion for, for some of these cardiovascular situations because well, you, uh, you definitely have the knowledge we need. Oh, well, it'd be my pleasure. So if, uh, if people want to schedule and come, you know, for yeah. an appointment, whether there's something going on or they want to make sure to prevent that, yeah. um, how do they find you? Uh, the easiest way would be just our website, vitalheartandvein.com. Okay. Uh, and then you could, uh, it, there's actually a lot of, useful information on our website in terms of uh, different disease processes, mm -hmm. a lot of medical education for our patients, all the different subspecialties we have, all the different physicians that we have. We take pride uh, at Vital in, in terms of having really, really, really high caliber physicians who are uh, experts in their specialty. And um, we, we, have, we have to... We, take care of our community, mm -hmm. right? And that's what it is. We're, we're not doing this um, for fun, if you will. Yeah. We're doing this because we have this um, obligation to care for our, our peers. And everyone at, under our organization loves their job. You know, yeah. we love what we do. We feel blessed to be part of this um, field, to be part of this organization. And uh, we take pride in taking care of the, the Houston community. Sure. I love it. Yeah. No, it's it's great. You guys are doing wonderful things, and um, I feel like I have so many more questions, but no. we'll definitely have to have you back. And uh, but I think a lot of the listeners are able to learn a lot more and, and know where to find you now. So thank yeah. you for being oh, here. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Hatching for Health. We'll see you right back here next Saturday. Mm -hmm.